Today, we are diving deep into the ongoing market manipulation that's been affecting AMC's stock, the mysterious 3 million spoofed shares, and how major institutions like Citadel and their prime brokers are grappling with financial issues. From failed trades to systematic manipulation, we'll dissect how these factors are influencing AMC's stock price and what it means for retail investors. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. To start off, let's talk about the practice of spoofing. For those unfamiliar with the term, Spoofing is an illegal market manipulation technique where large institutional players place orders at unrealistic prices, usually far below the current market value. This causes panic among retail investors, creating the illusion that there is an overwhelming supply of shares at a fraction of the current price. As a result, the price of the stock plummets. Once the price drops to a desirable level, the orders are promptly canceled before execution. This is a tactic commonly used to suppress the stock's price, especially in highly shorted stocks like AMC and GME. Recently, we observed an order of 3 million AMC shares, listed at an incredible price of 0.001 per share. This order was never intended to be filled. Instead, its sole purpose was to bring down AMC's share price through artificial means. What's alarming is that this isn't an isolated incident. It's been happening repeatedly for a long time now. Many of these spoof orders are placed by the same institutions. It's with a pattern of targeting stocks that present the greatest threat to short sellers, such as AMC and GME. What's even more interesting is that we don't see this level of spoofing or manipulation in other stocks that don't have a high short interest. It's always the stocks like AMC that pose a risk to large institutions' short positions that experience this kind of treatment. This pattern clearly shows that these institutions are actively working to suppress the price of AMC, despite its growing popularity and improved fundamentals. The obvious question is, if these institutions are no longer holding large short positions in AMC, why would they feel the need to continually spoof the stock? This indicates that they still have significant short positions or are heavily invested in seeing AMC's stock price drop. According to a tweet by the user Crystal Ball, 1 million AMC shares were listed as stink bids at 0 .00001 per share, layered in by brokerage firms like Wedbush and DA Davison. Crystal Ball has been tracking these spoof orders for 279 consecutive days, showing that this is a daily occurrence for AMC. This raises further concerns about market integrity and the lack of enforcement against such practices. Despite being illegal, these manipulative tactics continue, creating a disconnect between the stock's actual value and its trading price. It's disheartening for retail investors who are betting on AMC's potential based on the company's fundamentals. Spoofing isn't the only issue AMC faces. Another way AMC is being manipulated is through off-exchange trading. A significant portion of AMC's retail buy orders, around 66%, are not being routed to the lit markets, where they would influence the stock price. Instead, these orders are internalized within firms like City Securities. When buy orders are internalized, they do not compete on the open market, thus having little to no effect on AMC's share price. This internalization further suppresses the price as buy orders are not contributing to upward pressure. In a previous video, we talked about how AMC's buy orders are being systematically hidden from the public market. If all these buy orders were routed to the lit markets, AMC's price would likely be much higher due to natural supply and demand dynamics. However, by diverting these orders, institutions maintain control over the stock's price, keeping it artificially low. These manipulative practices, combined with dark pool trading, enable institutions to suppress the stock's price while avoiding scrutiny from regulators. It's a deliberate effort to ensure that any factors contributing to a potential short squeeze or price surge are minimized. Now let's turn our attention to the role of banks. Recently, we saw Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway offload 9.5 million shares of Bank of America. This sale dropped Berkshire's ownership in the bank below 10%, allowing Buffett to continue selling without triggering disclosure requirements. Why is this significant? 
Bank of America is one of the prime brokers for Citadel and a major lender for short positions against AMC. Buffett's move suggests a lack of confidence in Bank of America's financial stability. As banks continue to unload their holdings, it reflects the broader weakness in the financial sector, particularly among those with exposure to over-leveraged hedge funds like Citadel. This is important because it could indicate that Citadel, a major player in the AMC saga, is facing financial strain as well. Citadel, meanwhile, is scrambling to find new sources of liquidity. They attempted to establish a new brokerage in China after a failed bid to acquire Credit Suisse's onshore business. This indicates that Citadel is seeking to diversify its operations and find new revenue streams. But their struggles in the Chinese market, coupled with their heavy reliance on borrowed funds and over-leveraged positions, paint a bleak picture of their financial health. Adding to the chaos, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell recently stated that while the Fed can lower interest rates, it cannot solve the looming housing crisis. This statement has led many to believe that we could be facing a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis with a massive pullback in real estate valuations. Why is this relevant to AMC? Many of these large institutions, including Citadel, have collateral tied up in real estate. If the real estate market crashes, it will further deteriorate the value of their collateral, potentially leading to margin calls and forced liquidations. This scenario would cause a chain reaction, where these firms are compelled to cover their short positions, possibly igniting the long-anticipated short squeeze for AMC. A lot of discussions have centered around which stock is better, AMC or GME. It's important to note that both have their strengths and weaknesses. AMC, as a company, has a more robust business model compared to GME. However, GME boasts a large cash reserve that AMC currently lacks. The critical point to understand is that both stocks are being manipulated in similar ways, and both have the potential to squeeze if short sellers are unable to maintain their positions. The correlation between AMC and GME's price movements further proves that they are being targeted by the same entities. So it's not about which stock is superior. It's about recognizing that both are victims of the same manipulation tactics. If one stock experiences a squeeze, the other will likely follow suit, as they share many of the same short sellers. In conclusion, the manipulation tactics being employed against AMC and GME are blatant attempts to suppress the stock's price and dissuade retail investors. Whether it's spoofing, off-exchange trading, or dark pool internalization, these tactics aim to create fear and uncertainty. But with more attention being brought to these issues, retail investors are becoming more informed and more resilient. The financial difficulties faced by Citadel and other institutions along with the broader economic challenges, could be setting the stage for a massive shift in the market dynamics. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.